Hey guys, I hope you're well. Um, I'm here live in the city of London again. I wanted to talk just for a moment about the archetypes of leadership. We have inside of us characters that um, we each display in different measures. These characters, we, we think about people having different personalities, but there are some core um, characters that each one of us display that are common to all men. So what I wanted to talk about, I have to say, and women, and children, <laughs> What I wanted to talk about briefly was six key characters that I work with a lot to help people to move forward in life. Any place where they're stuck, these characters can really help. And as I'm going to be speaking about this on the 15th of August uh, in the evening at the next Authentic Self-Leadership Tribe meeting in the City of London, I wanted just to give a quick outline of who these characters are and what it is they can do for us. So, these are names that you will recognize instantly, and that's the real power of working with archetypes. Everybody from every language, every creed, every race uh, will understand what these archetypes are all about. So the first one is the king or the queen. Let's call that the sovereign. Uh, the Sovereign is really uh, such a, a clear character to each one of us. These big ancient myths from days past have very often got a king or a queen character in them. And if we don't call them a king or queen, then we can call them a captain or a leader um, of one sort or another. A government, uh, head of government would also fit into that uh, category as well. So they're the ones who are calling the shots. They're the ones who are commanding. They're the ones who are setting the boundaries and saying how things should be. At the end of the day, the sovereign cares about uh, peace and prosperity uh, for the whole of their realm. And so that's a key character uh, that is very, very important to uh, ourselves. And think about it, there are times when you're commanding. There's times when you uh, set the boundaries and you say, this is acceptable, this is not acceptable. But that may not be so strong in you. That's the king or the queen character that we're talking about. Then you've got the warrior. Everybody understands who the warrior is. Um, Anybody who forces things through, who pushes through to get a result, who's determined, who's focused, who brings their strength into the scene, that's the warrior spirit. And every one of us at times has, has accessed that part of us, made it happen, pushed it through, got a result, been totally focused on the mission until it's done. They're the ones who just do it. That's the warrior. Male or female, that energy is inside each one of us some more than others. Then we've got the sage character. The sage is like the, the, um, the intelligent one, the rational one, the one who is very much like um, Sherlock Holmes or Mr. Spock from those Star Trek movies. Very little emotion going on with these guys whatsoever. They're just focused on the facts, the evidence. They're great at being accountants, these guys. That's just what they're all about. Then who else do we have? Um, so I could talk about those three and say how they actually come together. But if you come to the talk on the 15th of um, August, uh, that's 2017. I don't know when you're watching this. Some of you are live. That's nice to see you. Um, and then we can talk about how these three actually form that left brain kind of character type. And we can, we'll separate that out. There's three others who we could all equally class uh, as being one side of the brain. And they're the right brain characters. They are coming up, the mystic, the lover, and the jester. The mystic is the dreamy one, the, the slightly more sort of spiritual one, the one who thinks outside of the box. They're not constrained by logic, um, and they don't necessarily just go with their emotions, but they're plugged into a higher level of awareness. These are the guys that dream. In business, it's the Steve Jobs type of character who's able just to see stuff that nobody else is seeing, who has a vision for something much bigger and greater, and isn't constrained by the kind of regular limitations that other people would put themselves under. They dream big, they imagine, they say, oh, just imagine, just imagine. Uh, but to the warrior, that type of character is a bit woolly, and <laughs> they live in dreamland. But there's a place for them, and we need the mystics. Then we've got the lover character. I don't just mean the Romeos and Juliets of the world. I'm talking about the people who love people, who care for people. People is the strongest part of the equation whenever they're trying to make decisions about things. And the lover characters are amazing at connecting, at bringing people together. They love harmony and they hate strife. They will do anything to get rid of strife. 
So that's the lover character. Again, as we've been saying, every one of these characters may be stronger in you, may be weaker in you. Uh, we will be profiling when we get together and seeing where each one of our character profiles are and what that really means for us. The last one is the jester. Now the jester makes light of things. We can't just be all serious, even serious in love or serious in dreams. But we certainly don't want to be stuck with the seriousness of the numbers all the time. We need people to come in and break up what's boring, to redefine uh, the situation with some funny ways of looking at things. Comedians are paid a huge amount of money in this culture to help us to get a, you know, above our, the limitations of our thinking, to see things from a, see the funny side of things. Simple as that. So those are the jester characters. And we've all got a little bit of that jester in us. Well, actually, I've met a few people who don't have any of the jester in them, but hey, um, we, most of us have got some of that character in us. If we live there all the time, we become really disruptive. But if we have a certain element of that, it adds some real spice into our lives too. So hey, that's a series of characters. Now the key thing is, if you're stuck in any area of your life, mm -hmm, you know the area where you're stuck, it's because one of those characters is not coming to the fore, you're not giving that character room, you don't know how to access that character and bring their strengths into the situation. If your finances are falling apart, you probably need the sage. Mm -hmm. If you need to bring things into order, they're the ones who can be logical, rational, take the emotion out of it. Money and emotion don't really mix very well if you want the money to grow, so that's one example. But you may not be connecting with people, you need the lover to come out. How do you access that lover inside of you Weak though it may be in some situations, hurt it may be in some situations and is recoiled. How do you allow that trust and that love to come out again? If you focus on that character and there's specific ways and exercises to do so, that can come out. In other situations, your kids are running amok and you have not done the sovereign thing. You've not acted as the king or queen, setting boundaries and saying this is acceptable, this is not acceptable, this is how we're going to do things, this is the consequence if you don't, and setting those things in order. None of these things make it, uh, you know, resolve your problems overnight, but all of them show you a pathway for you to be the character you need to be in order to get the result that you want to get. And so that is the absolute key, and that is the center of the message behind authentic self-leadership. That's why we call it the Authentic Self-Leadership Tribe. We meet monthly in the City of London, and we gather to go through new techniques, new understandings, but we base it upon principles, really uh, solid, ancient principles, the, the, those immutable laws that we need to follow if we're going to get our own lives in order. And with the chaos that's going on in the world, we could just point the finger and blame, it's the government's fault, it's the mayor's fault, it's the friend's fault, it's my father's fault, it's my genes. We can do anything we want around that, but at the end of the day, we can choose to take a path of responsibility uh, and follow an ethical route to do what is right by our ourselves and that will be doing what is right by society. If we've got that cardinal rule, that compass, that north star keeping us going towards the vision and we're balanced with ethics and we're prepared to throw effort into it as well with a little bit of that warrior, if we've got a good strategy, we will make things happen. But the key to it all is personal responsibility. And that personal responsibility is at the core of the authentic self-leadership tribe. If you want to get onto the tribe, go to meetup.com and search for the Authentic Self-Leadership Tribe. I don't know if you, you might have to define the geography as being the London area. We may spread this in later days, but right now it's a small but a growing tribe. The great thing about it is even though it's small in number, the people who are coming are dedicated and committed. I've really noticed that about the people who are coming along. And we're going to meet just once a month to start with. Later we might amp that up a little bit. But it'd be wonderful if you can get along, if you can join us. It's once a month. We'll be sharing some other stuff across the web, but it's the face-to-face -face meetings where the real encounters and the real transformations take place. That's why we're gathering. Look out for it on meetup.com. I'll add a link below. Uh, it'd be wonderful to see you there. Come along, test it out, see how it goes. And uh, we'll rumble on from there. It would be amazing to see you there. Come and join us at the self-leadership, the authentic, authentic self-leadership tribe in London, joining us on a monthly basis. Gotta go, there's work to do, bye.